Hey guys, Worldler here. Today, we're going to be progressing through tier 16. I'm going to start off by showing you what armor I have, then the familiar changes, and then we'll go on through the flags. Let's get started. So, to start off with my armor, I have a full set of Ondina, and it comes with three bonuses if you have the full set. For the two out of four, it's going to be when you get hit, gain 2.5 water resistance up to 10%. For the 3 out of 4, it's going to be plus 25% barrier if you have the lowest health of your team, meaning that I have to run bait with this if I want to utilize my 3 out of 4. And my 4 out of 4, which is 25% chance to deflect the damage to the furthest enemy if you have the lowest health on your team. So this is pretty much strictly a bait set, and yeah, that deflect to the furthest enemy doesn't stack with normal deflect so just keep that in mind and for my helmet i have a mythic thornstein crown it gives me plus four percent water resistance plus four percent electric damage and plus five percent absorb if i am the lowest health of my team which means i have to be bait no matter what if i want to utilize both my set and this helmet for my ring, I actually have a mythic ring, which is Thornstein Band. It gives me plus 4% water resistance, plus 4% electric damage, and Vampirism 10, 45% power when you get hit. Pretty much Vampirism 10 means that I have a 10% chance to deal the 45% damage when I get hit to um, the enemy that attacked me. And not only that, I will be draining from them as well which means it has some kind of self-sustain. So it's very, very nice. And I'm pretty sure some of y'all saw that I was lucky enough to roll Demeter's Blessing. Um, Demeter's Blessing is pretty much just a better version of what we already had. Um, I think it just gave me a few percentages to my deflex. So it's pretty nice to just, you know, keep everything consistent and know that my build is going on path. So I'm pretty excited to have rolled Demeter's Blessing probably one of the best defensive accessories especially if you're trying to climb invasion so very very hype about that i was also lucky enough to roll divine ward as my second accessory i was kind of hoping for ascendancy or maybe monarch's blessing but unfortunately i wasn't able to get those <laughs> but divine ward is still pretty pretty solid i just really wanted some empower in there but the ricochet chance and dual strike will be insane I am honestly super pumped. And for my mount, I'm just going to stick with Peach, seeing as they are just going to stack more deflect on my build. For my runes, I'm pretty much just going to stack deflect on as many of them as I can. And for my center rune, I'm going to be using the core rune, which is while below 25% health, heals received are 100% more effective. For my upwards triangle rune, I'm going to be using the wool rune, which is a 4% chance when you get hit to gain shielding equal to 10% of your current health. And for my downwards triangle, I'm going to be using the nonic rune, which is while at full health, gain 8% damage reduction. So that's what we're going to be rolling with. We're going to be progressing through Steampunk City to get to tier 18. We're first going to be hitting the first flag, which is Sewer Village, emerge from the sewers and defeat all enemies. We're going to be getting 50 rune fragments, one major revive potion, and 10k gold. Gotta love the gold. For the drops, nothing crazy. These schematics are alright. Um, Lady Spark in Washi Bot and Gobo Yobo, very good fams, at least most of them. However, I'm not sure if we're going to be going for them in this playthrough. Here is our old team. Now, I went ahead and max Drazig, as you can see here. I do have Empower, Dual Strike, Empower, and I am kind of hoping to replace one of these Empower with another Dual Strike, so I can be around 30 of each, somewhere near 30 crit chance, 30 Empower, and 30 Dual Strike. I also have a microprocessing stabilizing chip that gains increased damage the higher your target's health percentage is, up to a maximum of 10.8%. Not bad there. And for the brain, I do have a 66% chance to spread heal and spread shield when I hit an enemy. And for the skeletal lining, I have a your first attack on an opponent has a 16.8% increased chance to be empowered. Now, if you see here, we actually do have the old team, which was me, Drazig, Drazig, Eulerius. But we're actually going to be getting rid of Eulerius for Jello. 
Now, Jello actually has more base deflect than Eulerius. Eulerius comes with 13.5 and Jello comes with 18%. So it's a pretty good amount of deflect added onto Jello. Not to mention their stat spread, in my opinion, is just a little more compelling um, than Eulerius's. Now we're going to have deflect pumps that we already had on Eulerius on Jello all the way across the board on the bottom. We're also going to be having a microprocessing stabilizing chip that is while below 30% health, gain 19.2% damage reduction. And for the brain, we're going to have a 66% chance to heal team when you get hit. I also have the same brain, but with shielding, so we might switch between those two, still unsure. And for the skeletal lining, we do have a 15.6% redirect chance. I really wish I had better than an epic here, but sadly I do not. This is just what I have to work with. Now let's go ahead and add them to our team. Now this setup usually works, but I'm going to go ahead and try putting Jello up front since they are a better familiar than Eulerius was and putting me in the back to see how it goes. Let's check it out. Okay, first enemy. All right, and for the first fam, Debage, 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 however you say it, they seem like they're going to be a damage dealer, seeing as they have the 5% water damage. They also have a lot of stat in speed, a little bit in health, and very little in damage, so they're going to be poking you a lot. Um, for their skills, they have a 0 SP, which is deals water damage to a random enemy. Usually, the hardest hitting abilities are random, so that's very scary, um, but their power stat's pretty low. And for their 1 SP, they have a deals water damage to weakest enemy and freeze. Now the freeze is going to be the problem, but freeze tends to be pretty weak, so that's not going to be too, too bad. Up next, we have Twin Core. Twin Core has 7.5% water damage. They also have a decent amount of stat put into damage. And it seems like they're going to be a type of healer just looking at their skills. For their 0 SP, they have deals water damage to the strongest enemy. For their 1 SP, they have heals weakest teammate, which is really strong. They keep their bait alive, so that's pretty good. And for their 2 SP, they have heals target teammate. So it seems like they're just going to be poking at your tank and keeping their bait alive or healing whoever they feel necessary. So they're not too worrisome unless you have a tank that's just really troublesome or a bait that's really troublesome that's really giving issue i don't think twin core is going to be a problem so let's go ahead and see how we do i'm going to try manualing real quick oh yeah we're steaming through this and it seems like we're doing pretty good I'm going to go ahead and auto on the rest of the dungeon All right, and that's going to be the end of the dungeon. So we got the standard XP, gold, and commons. So let's go back to town. All right, that's going to be our rewards. The major revive potion, the rune fragments, and the 10k gold. Very nice. Let's go on to the next flag. Wes Bridges Song. Find and silence Wes. Okay, so the rewards are going to be 25 ancient fragments. 5 epic material and 10k gold. We're going to go ahead and keep the teams the same. It seems to have worked out. Let's check this out. All right, and it does seem like we have another familiar here in the group in the back. Let's go ahead and check them out real quick. Wes. So they come with 7.5% water damage. They have a decent amount of power, followed by agility, then health. Okay, not too crazy. They do hit a little hard. Their zero SP deals water damage to the close enemy and freeze. The freeze is a little scary, but it really just depends if it's working or not at this moment, because I know freeze was a little buggy. Um, deals water damage to a random enemy. That's going to be their one SP. A little scary since it is chunking pretty hard all the way up to 29k. And then for their two SP, deals water damage to target enemy and freeze. 
that is a very very strong ability we're just glad that it's a 2 sp so it doesn't seem too worrisome their speed is very low so i'm not that that worried all right so it seems like as long as you just target out west it should be pretty simple i'm gonna just target them out here and then continue on with debage other than that, I think that's what you're going to do for the remainder of the dungeon. So as long as you follow this path, it should be a little easy for you guys to get there. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the boss. I'll see you there. All right, and here we're going to be approaching the mini boss. Seems like it's just a larger Wes. Oh, yes. I played with the MC Ravens once. They didn't like my, my, my farts. Bird. All right, so as you see here, Jello is getting hit pretty, pretty hard. So what do we do? Honestly, I really think we should just double heal him. And then afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and use this skill right here that deals water damage to the strongest enemy two times and freeze just to see if I could poke him out in the back, seeing as he is the strongest enemy. Then I'm just going to use the 1 SP target on my Drazigs. And once they're gone, if you're able to defeat them, just go ahead and auto on the rest. And that's pretty much going to be it for that flag. Honestly, pretty easy. We got 18 gems from that gem bag. So all in all, pretty good. Okay, and that's going to be our rewards right there. So far, our team's doing pretty good. Let's go ahead and move on to the next flag here. Bricks Corner objective defeat all enemies while you try to enjoy your meal <laughs> okay so for the rewards we have 10 elemental fragments 40 mount guts love seeing those of course and 10k gold really nice honestly the drops are pretty much the same and the team let's keep it the same All right, so I just wanted to take a look at the familiar side by side before anything. Here we have Debaj, which does a random attack and a weakest attack. Twin Core seems to only target out the strongest enemy. So Wes does closest enemy, random enemy, and target, but they also do have very low speed. So what does that mean? It means that if you're going to have a bunch of twin cores, it really doesn't matter where you have your tank, seeing as they will always be the strongest. Because if you have a whole team of twin cores, they're going to be attacking uh, strongest, 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 strongest. And then let's say you have, um, let's say you have half, half twin cores and half west. They're pretty much going to be attacking closest and strongest, closest and strongest. So your Jello will be taking all the hits. So if you notice that's happening and you're getting stuck because you're just getting blown up and unlucky with the team comp, try putting your tank in the back and putting you up front. That might help you guys out if you're getting stuck. Now let's go ahead and move on through this. I'm going to see if I can auto. So this is an example of me up front with this team comp. And honestly, it seems like it's doing a lot better. Um, I do have better defenses and yeah, they do have attack weakest and random, but we do have a redirect chance on Jello, So that kind of dampens it a bit for us. I do believe this is probably the better setup in this area. Again, this is going to be if you are going the bait roll or if you are trying to position your bait, you would be wanting to put your bait up front for these flags. Seeing as I'm autoing this pretty effortlessly, I'm just going to go ahead and skip to the end of the flag. Alright, and that's going to be the end of the flag. Pretty standard drops, bunch of experience, gold, and other goodies. Let's go ahead and move on. For our rewards, they're right there. We got the elemental fragments along with the guts and gold. Let's go ahead and go on to the first dungeon of Steampunk City, Gorobot Pipeline. Defeat Gorobot and open the steamy gates. We're going to be getting one stat point and 100 gems. Always great to get those. The drops are pretty much going to remain the same. It's just going to have some mud, so that's pretty good. So for here, just like any other dungeon in these zones, I highly recommend using your carries. Try not to use your fams unless you're trying to do a challenge for yourself because your carries will almost always be a better option. I'm going to auto on through this and I'll see you at the boss.
The queen of the town is hungry, and you certainly look like a watery piece of flour and butter. I'll make a great cake with you. Dinner is served. Okay, cool. He didn't die instantly, which is great. Let's go ahead and check him out. All right, so this is Gorobot. He has 10% water resistance, which is obviously leaning towards a tank. They have a decent amount of health, and it looks like their second best is in strength. Their speed is extremely low. They have a zero SP, deals water damage to furthest enemy and corrupt. Corrupt reduces the highest resistance on the enemy by 5%, and it can stack up to three times, making it 15%, of course. They have a 1 SP, which deals water damage to the closest three enemies and drain a little bit of sustain there for them. They also have a 1 SP shield self, along with a 2 SP deals water damage and drain from the furthest enemy. So it seems like there's a lot of self sustain with this familiar, probably something you'd want to take out first. Let's go ahead and auto on through this. All right, and that's going to be our loot right there. We got a little bit of gems and the 2100 gold, of course. Very nice drops. Go ahead and go to town. There's our award, the stat point along with the 100 gems. Now let's go on to the fourth flag, which, which is going to be new steamy city. Get lost in the steamy city and defeat all its enemies. For this area, we're gonna be getting 50 rune fragments, one major healing potion, and 10k gold. For the drops, they're all pretty decent. Honestly, there's nothing too crazy here to get, so let's go ahead and move on to the team. So let's go ahead and go on to the team comp. Now for the team comp, I think we're going to keep it the same until we see what we are actually dealing with. So let's check out these two new enemies. For the first one, we have Basox, I guess. Basso. Let's just call him Basox. Really cool. They come with 7.5 electric resistance as their base kit. They have a lot of health, more speed than health, surprisingly, and very low damage, which means they're going to be more of like a speed tank, speed bait. For their skills, they have a deals electric damage and drain from the closest enemy as their zero SP. So whoever's up front is going to be getting drained a lot because of their speed. Um, they have deals electric damage to the closest enemy and shock. Now that shock is going to be very dangerous seeing as they are very fast. So they might be one of the higher priorities. We'll have to see. That is a zero SP, by the way. They have deals electric damage and drain from random. Now, to me, that's not too bad. All right, let's check out the other familiar. Boy, Rodon. I'm just going to call him Roto. This is going to be Roto here. They have 7.5% electric damage as their base kit. They have a lot of speed here as well, with very low health and low damage. So they are going to be faster than the last familiar, but here's their skills. Deals electric damage to the furthest enemy and to the closest enemy. Okay, so pretty much it's going to be dealing to the furthest and the closest, targeting me and Jello out. So he's going to be hitting us a lot, and it is electric damage, so it's going to be poking me out pretty bad. They also have deals electric damage to the weakest enemy, Shock. So I can already tell you right now, this guy is target number one. You want to make sure you get rid of him. We're going to have to have us in the back and Jello up front. They also have a 2 SP, which is deals electric damage to the closest three enemies and Shock. Now, the reason why this ability is so concerning is because they have a lot of speed. So they'll be able to get those 2 SP pretty quickly so you got to make sure you target out roto as quickly as possible i'm going to be safe in the back but even then their zero sp will still be poking me out but jello and the two drazigs are definitely going to be getting shock stacks if you don't take them out quickly so we're definitely going to have to manual this i'm not too comfortable going auto at least until we see how much damage they're going to deal to us you see that right there? It's due to the fact that Roto actually used his two SP that targets the first three and puts a shock stack on them. So you can see here how powerful a group of them can actually be. They're definitely target number one. I'm going to go ahead and skip on through here and see you at the end of the flag.
All right, and that's going to be our loot recap, XP gold, and some goodies. Honestly, it was a lot easier than I thought it was. Um, towards the end of the flag, I was just like, you know what, let me auto, let me see if I can do it. And I was actually steaming through pretty effortlessly. It seems like Jello only dropped to half health maybe once, and it didn't even seem too worrisome. So all in all, pretty easy. Let's go ahead and check out this next area, Bassox Garland. Get rid of Bassox's funk. It's going to be coming with Ancient Fragments along with an Epic Bubbling Cauldron and 10k Gold. The loot is going to remain the same, just with mud, and I really do like the way the team comp was, so let's go ahead and continue like this. So, if I remember correctly, this whole flag doesn't have a single new familiar until you get to the boss. So, I'm just going to go ahead and skip through this and see you there. Okay, we're very, very topped off on everything. Dude, you want to know about the MC Ravens? I know who knows. But first, add me in Spountify. I just released my solo album. Your head is so crushable. So they managed to squeeze one new familiar here at the very end, and this fam is called Vernesilio. Vernesilo? Vern? I'm just going to call him Vern. Um, they do have a base kit of plus 5% electric damage, and their stat spread is heavily leaning towards speed and damage, with health being their lowest at only 3k for my stats. Um, they do have a 0 SP deals electric damage to the weakest enemy and shock. They also have a 1 SP shields and heals team. So they might be trying to heal and shield the team before they try dealing too much damage to you. But their 0 SP could be used whenever so it's really hard to tell. I would just focus Roto and then Vern if possible. I would say for this flag just target out the back two and then focus the tank at the end. I think it'll give you the cleanest results. Once you take out the two in the back, just use the strongest abilities you can to take out the boss. They really don't do too much damage. As long as you keep poking at them with your hardest hitting abilities, you really shouldn't have any problems and you should be able to steam on through. All right, and that's gonna be our loot recap. Try to ignore all the eggs and carrots and stuff that you see here. There is an event going on at the time of recording. Here's gonna be our rewards. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the sixth flag. Yurakuchos, Yurakuchos, I'm gonna just call them Yura. Yura Street, defeat all enemies in Yura Street. We're going to be getting 10 elemental fragments, one super potion, and 10K gold. The drops are gonna be the same, and we're also going to keep the team comp the same as well. So I'm just going to auto on through this and I'll see you at the end of the dungeon. Nice, we got some nice gold and XP. Let's go ahead and check out our rewards here. Nice. All right, we're gonna be moving on to the second dungeon here, which is Trombolini's Bandstand. Honestly, Trombolini is pretty strong. So if you are doing a familiar only run, just be wary of that. I highly recommend using your carries and let's go ahead and check it out. Trombolini's Bandstand, Crash Trombolini's Stage. You're gonna be getting two stat points and 100 gems. The drops are gonna be all the same. Let's go ahead and check out the team comp. So I do recommend using your carries, so I'm gonna be using my carries for this one. I'm gonna auto on through the dungeon and I'll see you at the boss. Do da do, my sax is happy this evening. You wanna know why? Because it's about to funk you up. <laughs> oh no, he's dead. Okay, we'll go over him right now in a second. I'm so sorry, I forgot to take off auto. But trust me, he's cool. <clears throat> okay. All right, and that's going to be our loot recap. I'm so sorry for pretty much destroying him instantly. Let's go check him out. All right, let's go to familiars and search up Trom. See if we could find Trombolini. There he is. 
So Trombolini surprisingly comes with 10% electric resistance, which is a little strange seeing as they do seem like a damage dealing familiar. I would expect them to have damage, but oh well. They do have an insane amount of stat spread into speed and then more into strength than health, but not by much. Um, they have a zero SP, deals electric damage to the strongest enemy in shock. That ability alone is devastating with the amount of speed they have. It automatically targets your tank and it just keeps shocking, shocking, shocking. If that's the only ability they keep using, they will nuke your tank in no time. They may have very little strength, but that much speed is going to be poking you out like crazy. They have a 1 SP, deals electric damage to a random enemy and shock. That random enemy and shock can hit extremely hard. As you can see, it's almost double the amount of damage at the max damage as the 0 SP, so it's pretty devastating, especially if it lands on your tank again. You gotta watch out for that one. They also have a 1 SP, deals electric damage to target enemy and shock. Another extremely powerful ability to keep an eye out for. Very, very troublesome. And for their 2 SP, they have a deals electric damage to the furthest enemy two times. The only good thing about that is there's no shock on it, but that is their most expensive um, ability SP wise. So it doesn't really matter seeing as they can just pick whoever they want anyways with their 1 SP target. So Trombolini is very strong and very dangerous, especially in the D4 you face them in. And that's another video of its own. But yeah, just be very wary of Trombolini. I highly recommend taking him out first, no matter what team he's in. He is very, very dangerous. Yeah, that's Trombolini. Let's go ahead and go back to the quest. So we're going to be going on to the seventh bag, which is Old Iron Mines. Traverse through all the mines. Or sorry, traverse through the mines and defeat all enemies. So this is a defeat all enemies area. We might be seeing one or two new familiars. I don't really think they'll throw all three of us right away at us right away. Um, we have the rune fragment reward, uh, 50 of them, an average energy potion and 10k gold, of course. For the drops, it's going to be Zulum schematic, Melv's Drillo schematic. Now Melv's Drillo schematic is very solid. If you don't like farming raid familiars, this DPS is an insane addition to your team because they do a lot of damage or a lot of heals. They're very, very good at both. So this is a very good hybrid style DPS that I highly recommend getting. This is more than likely going to be an addition to our team. Very, very solid schematic to get. Try getting the schematic if possible when unlocking the dungeon fort. Okay, go ahead and check out the team comp. I'm not sure if we want me up front for now, but we're going to throw jello up front move accordingly if we have to so turn off auto here's a cool looking guy he looks like a little miner okay cool so we have two new familiars here one of them you all may already know what their name is and i'm pretty sure y'all resent them but let's start off with this guy here car bonor this is going to be i'm just gonna call him carb so Carb here has 5% fire damage as their base stat, or base bonus, sorry. Um, they have a lot of damage, a decent amount of health, actually kind of on the low side, and around the same amount of speed. Honestly, just seeing their kit, I'm not too concerned. A lot of people usually do get worried when they see Combust in an ability because it's just so strong, but it is a very, very slow familiar, and it's looking like they're going to lean towards a healer role, seeing as they do have a 1 SP shield and heal target teammate. As just a solo familiar alone, they are nothing to trip about. So it just depends. Now for the guy in the back, you already know who this is. This is Jerry Claypool. The infamous Jerry Claypool, one of the hardest familiars to go through in this game for some reason. So we're going to go and see if we can get through this when we meet his boss form. But as of right now, let's check out his base bonus kit, which is going to be 7.5% fire damage. He's going to be leaning in towards speed and then damage with health being his lowest stat. And if you see here, his skills have deals fire damage to the furthest enemy and combust. So whoever's in the back right away. Seeing their speed is going to be getting nuked very, very hard. You're going to either want you or your tank in the back for sure. And you want to make sure that it's something that won't blow up really easily. So if you're the bait and you feel like you last longer than your tank for some reason, because they're just not up to par, then you go in the back. If you have a very solid tank, let's say you have um, 
Jello, maybe. Or if you have Tethius, let's say you actually went all out and farmed Tethius, put him in the back for sure. Trust me. Um, but yes, put your strongest tanky ish, either familiar or yourself in the back. Cause trust me, you're going to need it. Um, for their one SP and shields target teammate. So they automatically have a shield. They're more likely going to shield themselves if they have to, but that's what they do. So for their two SP melting wave, they deal fire damage to the closest two enemies and combust. Now the problem here, this is a real big problem. They will be poking out a Drazig and combusting them very, very often. So what do we do in that case? You notice they poke the Drazig, just swap them back and forth consistently until you see like their health getting a little more fair then you swap back and forth. Keep an eye on how much combust stack. Remember, every time he hits them, it's combusting. And if you look here, there's no target. It's just furthest and closest to. So you'll know how many stacks they have. If you look at this guy right here, it's closest enemy. So far, not a single familiar on the enemy team can target out your Drazig. So just know if they take damage, there's more than likely a combust stack on them, seeing as every attack that does deal damage has combust on the team so far. So automatically assume a combust stack is on your Drazig. Now, I honestly do recommend to have your damage numbers on, especially if you're stuck on a flag, um, just to make sure you're not getting too many combust stacks, shock stacks, bleed stacks, and stuff like that on your familiars. It helps you uh, keep an eye on it if you're not used to it like some of the more veteran players are. But yeah, really big tip there. Make sure you turn that on. As you can see here, Jello is taking quite a lot of hits because of all these combust stacks on him from Carbonor. Just keep an eye on him and heal him as necessary. Try to make sure you have a heal ready to heal him for when that combust explodes. Try to use as little SP as possible so you can keep healing if you get stuck in this motion where you have to keep healing a combusted target. I recommend trying to poke out a Jerry Claypool in the back if they are a single Jerry since they are the ones doing the most damage and saving a heal for Jello when needed. Let's go ahead and see if this next group will have a different layout, maybe with more Jerry's. So for this scenario, what I highly recommend doing is always attacking the Jerry furthest to the back if you do have multiple Jerry's. And the reason for that is because no matter what moveset you have, you will be able to target them out unless all you have for some reason is attack weakest. So you can use either attack target, attack furthest, attack strongest, you know, for any of those, any of those will be able to target out a Jerry or even attack all, of course. And then once you get him down some health, he's not too far away from Carb up front. So once you poke him out just a little, you can even hit him with attack weakest. So I always recommend taking out the furthest Jerry all the way until you take out all the Jerry's. And of course, heal accordingly. Like if you notice your Jello or your bait is getting really low, go ahead and try healing them. But for this layout or any layout with multiple Jerry's, always target the back one out first and then go towards the front. I'm going to go ahead and continue on with this flag. I don't see it as an issue. I'll see you at the end of the dungeon. All right, so that's going to be our drops. And these are going to be our rewards. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the flag I'm talking about. Jerry Claypool tracks. Follow the tracks and defeat Jerry Claypool. Now, if we can't beat this right now, it means that we have a familiar issue or maybe our set is just not cutting it but in my opinion we should be able to do this we have a lot of deflects deflect back whatever he does to us so it should just be trial and error we do have a very hard hitting familiar but jerry claypool's boss variant is very fast so they might take us out just keep that in mind i feel like having jello in the back is the safest bet for right now I don't think having Jello up front would be the best idea. I'm still not sure, but we'll figure it out right now. Now, it's very crucial to remember that if you are having problems with the boss, you want to save as much SP as possible. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. Ooh, actually there's a new familiar here. Let's check them out. Mechanica, which is 7.5% fire resist as the bonus. They have a lot of health, making them a tank of course. Decent damage and very, very low speed. For their skills, it's Wind of Four. Deals fire damage to closest enemy and corrupt. Strapler, which is deals fire damage and drain from the closest enemy. 
and then flaming iron deals fire damage to the closed enemy and combust i'm honestly not even worried about this familiar they are nothing to me they don't do any damage they're not fast they're just there to annoy you so your best bet is to just target out everything in the back now this team is very ideal for jerry claypool four jerry claypools and one tank up front what do you do in that scenario well again you target out the back and the reason you target out the back is because again you have attack furthest as your three sps so you're pretty much just going to be nuking the back nuking the back nuking the back and self-sustaining i highly recommend taking out as much jerry's as possible and only attacking the front if you really have to try to keep a heal just in case you need to use one for an explosion because if there is an explosion a lot of health will be lost on whatever familiar gets hit by that just make sure you're ready to heal up but try to use as little sp as possible and also try to lower the amount of jerry's as quickly as possible it takes a little bit of time but you'll get it also try not to trip too much on your health as long as you're not below 50 percent and you do have some sp you can always just heal to full with your dual strike empowered crit drazigs pretty pretty quickly so that's why sp is extremely important compared to health um as long as you have a decent amount of health like 50 percent or more you could easily just heal up when you're on your last jerry if possible, try to find a health shrine or the boss as quickly as possible if you have enough SP. Right now, I'm kind of targeting out the Mechanicas, seeing as they are the easier targets. And if you do see one in the realm while walking, you do know that there is a guaranteed Mechanica in the team, lessening the amount of Jerry's. Here, just target out the Jerry's, and once you do, just spam zero SP to get as much SP stack as possible. So just continue 0 SP, 0 SP, 0 SP as much as you can till you can get as full as possible when you get a group like this. A group like this is the best case scenario because it lets you fill up on just about everything, shields, heals, and SP. So yeah, these guys really don't do anything to me. Just keep going until you're done and try to find the boss or a shrine right after if possible. One other thing to keep in mind is you might actually have some combust stacks from the last battle, so just be wary on that. This seems like a pretty long path. Gary might be this direction. So seeing as this group is just all Mechanicas, I'm just going to speed through it real quick. So we're going to find out right now if... Jerry Claypool is going to melt our Jello or not, if he is on this side. If not, then uh, we're going to have to redo this again with me in the back, seeing if that makes a difference. But I think we might be okay. Everything seems fine so far. Not sure how your guys' runs look when you're pretty much progressing through here, but I'm maxed out on a lot right now. Okay, so he wasn't over here. Let's look for him. This group isn't too insane, so I'm just going to target out the clay pools and zero SP so I can stack up again. So if you find yourself in this scenario where you have three Jerry clay pools and the Mechanica right before your main Jerry, um, it's best to save all the SP you can on your main character, seeing as you do tend to have the hardest hitting abilities, whether you are a bait or a DPS. Try to keep as much of your SP as possible. Use your Drazigs. Since they do have more speed, they gain SP faster, making it easier for them to recover it at the end. Just keep that in mind. Okay, here he is, here he is. Oi, Jerry. How is your car working out lately? People says you're looking for the MC Ravens. I'll tell you the name of Adam if you beat this bass line first. So right off the bat, your jello or whatever tank you have in the back is going to take a hit. Swap your bait that's in the front with your jello in back. 
So no matter what, after you move your jello to the front, just keep targeting the back with as much of your abilities as possible. You're going to be using your target SP with your Drazik, and you're of course going to use your attack furthest with your Undina main hand. Your jello may die, that's fine. Don't heal him before he dies. Use a major revive potion. Him taking that one hit will prevent one of your Drazigs from either insta exploding or getting close to it. So make sure you don't heal your tank, you let him die, and use your max revive. He may lose all his SP, but his SP is the least valuable in the whole team, so it's worth the loss. And as you saw there, I defeated him like nothing. It was honestly extremely easy for me. This wasn't my first attempt, this was my second. That's why you see it on a different map. I just went ahead and sped through it all so you didn't have to see me go through the flag again. The reason why I lost on my first attempt was due to the fact that I unfortunately did not swap my jello on time um, because I misclicked auto by accident. So yeah, I went ahead and just skipped over to the end of my second run. There you go. Just to go ahead and show you again, I have everything set to damage except for my body. That way you can see exactly what my stat spread looks like. You only need one for health, and the reason why is because you don't want to be one shot, but you want to have enough health to be bait, survive a few hits, and you want to make sure that when you use your 3 SP, it hits like a truck. Jerry Claypool's in the back, so it's not too hard to defeat him using that 3 SP ability. You are going to have to put your tank in back again. I can't stress this enough. Taken back, they'll take the first hit. You move them forward. Because again, remember, the two up front are just going to focus on keeping Jerry alive. So don't even worry about them. Honestly, they're not important until Jerry is taken care of. So all in all, pretty simple flag. I really think that people only struggle because they don't remember to swap whenever you're low health. And sometimes people just don't work on tank familiars. So if you're struggling, get a new tank. So let's go ahead and go on to the last flag here. Kamioka Reservoir. Clear the reservoir of all enemies. We're gonna be getting 10 elemental rune fragments, one PVP ticket roll, and 10K gold. The rewards are all the same, so don't worry. Nothing here is that crazy. We're gonna keep me in the front and Jello in the back. And here you go. I'm gonna go ahead and auto on through this. I'll see you at the end of the dungeon. All right, and there's our loot recap. And we're pretty much done with the area. All we have to do is do the last dungeon. Um, there's the rewards, by the way. And yeah, we just gotta do the last dungeon and we're done with this tier. It's Pomp Drillo's Tunnel. Reach the end of the tunnel and defeat Pomp Drillo. You're going to be getting three stat points and a hundred gems. Rewards are going to be the same except with mud this time. So let's go ahead and enter on through. And of course, bring your best carries. Let's go on through it. I'll see you when I reach the boss. Yes, I was the MC Ravens manager downtown. What do you want? You need a PR? Hey, I didn't steal any money from them. This car was a gift from your mom. Okay, so luckily he didn't die right away. Let's check him out. This is going to be Pomp Drillo. They're going to have a base bonus of 10% fire damage. They are leaning a lot into damage and almost the same amount in speed with very low health. Seeing this automatically pretty much tells me that they are going to be uh, more damage dealing offensive familiar. So they might be very dangerous if you are going to be using familiars only. They will be your number one target. So for their skills, deals fire damage to the weakest enemy and combust as their zero SP. They also have a one SP deals fire damage to target enemy and combust, which is very, very dangerous if you are doing a familiar only run. They have another one SP, which is deals fire damage to the weakest enemy two times and a two SP deals fire damage to the weakest enemy and combust. So it seems like they have a lot of combust and mostly damage weakest. So they are going to be poking out your bait quite a bit. 
So priority number one for sure, then Jerry, then the rest. I'm gonna go ahead and auto on through. I'll see you. All right, and that's gonna be our loot recap. And just like that, goodbye, Steampunk City. Honestly, good riddance. Let's go on to the next area. New adventures await you in Olympian Secret Party. Ooh, very, very exciting. So before I go ahead and finish off the episode with all the loot drops and the raid run, I'm going to go ahead and complete all these stars. I'll see you when I'm done. All right, and I went ahead and finished all those stars. Let's go ahead and check out the loot recap. PVP will pretty much remain the same if you already pushed it. You really can't see a difference here until weekly reset if you did any pushes. Right now we have Expedition. Expedition should automatically change all of the gear here to your current tier once you get into that tier. So if you were in tier 16 and you saw it as tier 16, now it is tier 17. Let's go ahead and go on to Gauntlet. All right, I'm gonna try to keep this short and sweet because we all know what Witcham is, but yeah, let's check out the drops on TG. In TG, we do have our first mythic here, which is Exothermic Jacket. It comes with 4% air resistance, 4% earth damage, and bark skin. Bark skin pretty much makes it to where you can't take more than 50% of your health all that one chunk. So if something just completely nukes you out, other than Extort, of course, um, you shouldn't drop below 50% health. Extort is the only thing that really counters this, seeing as it for some reason just doesn't stop Extort. Don't know why, it just doesn't when I think it really should. But anyways, yeah, you also receive 50% less healing. So a lot of people don't think it's that much. Trust me, when you put it on, you'll feel the difference. Let's go ahead and move on to the next mythic here, which is Exothermic Fortitude. Now, the reason why this one is really good is if you don't have Clover, this one paired with Exothermic Jacket is really, really nice because when you take that first 50 chunk, you're obviously going to get stopped by Jacket. But if you take more and you might die, this will actually stop you just like the other one did. And it'll feel like it'll pretty much fill up your health and your shields. So this is a very, very great combo of mythics. Just know that the jacket is still pretty scary. So yeah, I'm not sure if the jacket will cut this in half, seeing as it says you get 50% less heals, but either way, it's a lifesaver to have both of these on if you're going to run Witchum. Now, speaking of Witchum, let's go ahead and check out Witchum. Witchum obviously comes as a four piece set, which is gonna be ring, helm, offhand and main hand it's going to be an air set which means there is bleed in the set the zero sp has bleed and that is the best ability in the set don't use anything else trust me uh let's go over the bonuses for the two out of four we do have 15 percent chance to attack closest um it also comes with a shield self <clears throat> for the two out of four we do have a 15 percent chance to attack closest and shield self when you evade so you already have a percentage chance to evade as is with a max cap of 75 so once you hit that percent chance you proc it then you have another percentage chance at 15 percent to attack closest and shield self very strong but if you don't have clover it really doesn't proc that often it's a very very good bonus to have if you have clover and it's just okay if you don't have it for the three out of four, it's pretty straightforward. It has a double enchant bonuses bonus. So you can pretty much have 60 evade with just this set and just a max, a maxed out enchant slot. <clears throat> so for the three out of four, it's the enchant bonuses doubled. Pretty straightforward. You can have six evade enchants and you can pretty much max out i think at 30 extra evade with just mythic enchants of evade so that's crazy and that's not even counting the four out of four which gives you 30 percent evade as it is giving you 60 total if you do have full evade mythic enchants it also comes with a negative which is negative 30 percent sp regeneration but this is a tank bait setup you don't really care for sp in fact this negative is actually a positive because if you think about it, the only good 
ability is your zero SP. So when you're autoing, you want that negative 30 SP regeneration so you can keep using your bleed as much as possible. I highly recommend against using the upwards triangle that gives you any... No. But yeah, that's Witcham in a nutshell. I really doubt you guys needed me to explain that, but for those of you that really don't know what Witcham is for some reason, that's Witcham, and I'm pretty sure you can see why it's so powerful. Let's go ahead and go on to the world boss. That's... So the sad thing about all this is we only have two world boss now. Titans is no more. So we do have the Ignited Abyss and Nordic only. With that being said, let's go ahead and check out Ignited Abyss real quick. Let's check out these first mythics. The first mythic, Exothermic Saw, 4% fire resistance, 4% water damage. Skills that cost SP gain 10% damage bonus. For the second mythic, we do have Exothermic Exterminer, which does plus 4% fire resistance, plus 4% water damage. Gives team one SP the first time you heal per battle. Now, that's pretty useful if you run it with Polly, but Polly is pretty niche and kind of hard to up tier, so this really isn't too great. Let's go ahead and move on to the set. Now for the set, this is one of my personal favorites, which is the Torch set. The Torch set is a four piece set, of course, that comes with a helm, body, neck, and ring. So it's not really the greatest set in the world if you're trying to pair it with much things. You could always run weave instead of the neck or ring, and you could always have a really nice main hand, off hand set, or just pretty much run it just to have that extra 5% damage bonus and damage reduction with some mythics. But yeah, let's go ahead and check out the two out of four bonus here. 2.5% team enrage to your teammates. For the two out of four, for the three out of four, you have 15% team SP regen and weaken 15%. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe weaken just reduces the enemy's team SP regen. So it's pretty much like you're stealing their regen just because you're gaining it and you're also taking it. That's just kind of like what it feels like for the set itself. For the four out of four, it's going to be plus 20% team health, which is pretty nice. It makes everyone a little tankier. Um, so that's really nice. And your team also deals 20% more damage and take 20% less damage. This is a very, very nice set. But again, it is a neck ring set, which a lot of people do not like. But if you don't have Weave and you don't have Clover, you don't want to take use of Evolvium, there's no real other reason not to run this set over any of the other ones. Of course, obviously which is going to be better, but if you're not trying to do the same thing as everyone else, this is probably one of the most solid support sets in the game. So I personally like this set. Not too sure if I'm going to take this one with me to the top or not, but it is very interesting indeed. Let's go ahead and go to Nordic. Now, Nordic does have two pretty good mythics, in my opinion. So, Exothermic Armor. The reason why this one is good is because if you don't have Clover and you're trying to max block, which a lot of players are in this tier for some reason, this gives you 10% block. So, it's really nice to have. Very, very solid mythic. Is it extremely necessary? No. Is it like meta? No, but it's a very nice one to have. Let's go ahead and check out the helm. Now, there is another helmet next tier that actually outshadows this one, but this one is still very solid if you're in this current tier. So this current tier, this is probably one of the best mythics in the tier, which is Exothermic Hat. If you run it with Witchum with a Weave Neck, you can honestly have a lot of offensive capability with your Witchum. Very, very solid mythic. So let's go on to the set, which is going to be a four piece set that comes with a ring, main hand, off hand, and neck. For the two out of four bonus, you're going to be getting 5% redirect and also heals received are 15% more effective. Now that's pretty good seeing as that is only just a two out of four. Let's check out the three out of four electric resistance and expender two. Expender two means once you spend two SP, once you spend two SP, heal team 
for so much which is pretty decent you have a heal team once you spend two sp now the only reason why it's not insane is because you are a tank or a bait using this more than likely a tank since it shows redirect so if you can get that two sp off nice pretty nice to help out with those heals but nothing crazy and jord conduit jord conduit does 20 percent of the enemy's healing is redirected to you and you also gain 40% block chance. Now that game 40% block chance isn't a part of the uh, Jord Conduit, it is its own thing. So 40% block chance plus the Jord Conduit is pretty nice. This is a very solid set as well. I do know that the main hand does have quite a beefy hard hitting attack. So that is really good to know. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the world boss. Now it may look a little different here in the background. I was having a tremendous amount of issues recording and editing and I had so many audio issues so that is why this video never came out it's not because I didn't want to share it with you guys or because I was just being lazy it was it was a lot I just finished editing this video for I'd say six six to seven hours which is insane that's because I already had put in four hours for another half of this so it's over it's almost about a 12 hour project just for this one video that isn't even that long so yeah let's go ahead and check out the raid guys sorry again for going off on that little rant but oh my god it was it's just it's crazy we're going to the raid which is brawly gross palace let's check out the loot here of course we're going to check heroic so the loot check out the first two mythics for the mythic ring we do have braveheart which is a four percent chance to ignore the enemy's defenses Braveheart is really, really good. This would be very well paired with Polynomicon if you have it. So if you do have Poly, this is a very, very solid DPS mythic to pair with it. We also have another very solid DPS mythic to pair with Poly or just run solo, which is going to be Exothermic Mask, one of my personal favorite mythics in the game because it does nanolites. Nanolites is 50% chance to barrage an enemy with nanolites dam er, for so-and-so damage when you hit them. So as long as you're hitting them, you have a 50% chance to barrage the enemy with it. If you pair this with Clover, you have a rerolled 50% chance, which is insane. And if you pair this with Polynomicon, you have two 50% chances to reroll if you have it with Clover as well. So you're going to be proccing these nanolites like crazy if you're running this with Clover and Poly combo. Very, very solid. Highly recommend getting this mythic and taking it up to the top if you are a serious DPS player. Let's go ahead and check out the schematics. We do have the Kazolan schematic here, which is for a later raid. And we have the Lady Sparkin schematic. Now, Lady Sparkin is extremely solid. She is probably the best support in the game right now, especially up to this tier. I can't think of another support that is better than Lady Sparkin. A lot of people think she's a healer. She's not a healer, although she does have a lot of healing abilities. She is more classified as a healish type support. She's more of a support, so just keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and check out the set here. So for the set, we do have a four-piece set called El Corvo. It comes with a neck, I believe. I believe this is a neck. A neck, offhand, main hand, and body. So let's check out the set bonuses. For the two out of four, we have enemies take 5% more damage. Nothing crazy, honestly. Kind of a bad bonus to begin, but let's check out the three out of four. The three out of four is a 25% chance to root for so-and-so damage when you hit. So whenever you hit, you automatically have a 25% chance to root them, which is very, very nice. And on top of that, for the three out of four as well, you also get 15% dual strike against rooted enemies. So just seeing what this set shows you, you're going to be dual striking quite a bit because you're going to be rooting quite a bit. You have a bunch of root abilities in your main hand that are also going to help you root not just counting this three out of four bonus let's check out the four out of four bonus hunter's mark when you hit a target with four root stacks remove them and deal so and so damage to them honestly 
This set seems very solid on paper, and I don't know why, but a lot of people do not like this set. And I think if I could guess, it would be because it involves Root. Root is nothing crazy strong. I actually think it's one of the weaker amplifiers, so that is kind of sucky, but it's whatever. Um, we'll go ahead and continue on with the raid so you guys can see these legendary schematics here. Sicka Bombs is pretty good, very useful in some mythic fusions. Um, Steam Bee, not useful at all. And Kakulax is probably one of the most annoying schematics to make because it involves another legendary familiar from another raid just to be put into this one. And this one is put into Lady Sparkin. So this is required for Lady Sparkin, but honestly, very, very annoying to make and it's terrible. So that's that experience if you are going for Sparkin. This epic schematic here is Gokalax schematic. I haven't really looked too much into Gokalax, but I will in the future and possibly make a video on that as well. Let's go ahead and check out the raid so we can see all of these amazing familiars. So I do have a bunch of extort here. I'm gonna make sure I don't have a bunch of crazy extorts. And I'll just put someone like Hulk. I don't want him too fast. Let's do Goose. I know Goose could probably solo all of this. And we'll also put on Nuki. So Kanuki and Goose are gonna be my test dummies here. We're gonna go ahead and continue. Okay, we're coming on to our first familiar. Let's check it out. So we already killed the first one by accident, but we'll see what this guy looks like. This is Lil Gator. Lil Gator comes with plus 10% air resistance, nothing crazy. And they also have a lot more stat into power and health with very, very little speed. So it seems like they're gonna be our tank for the area. We have a zero SP deals air damage and drain from the closest enemy and bleed. So that bleed right there is going to be extremely, extremely annoying. Although he is very slow, when he does hit you, he will put a bleed stack on you and that is insane. He has a one SP shield self, which is pretty nice for him to keep himself alive. He has a one SP deals air damage and drain from the strongest enemy. This is a really bad ability seeing as it hits your tank and usually tanks have pretty offensive modifiers around this tier, so he's just going to be killing himself with this ability. For the 2 SP, it deals air damage and drain from all enemies. Pretty good ability to help keep him alive, but it is a pet procker, so just keep that in mind. He's probably going to be killing himself. So let's check out this next familiar here, which is going to be Jumper Lax. Jumper Lax comes with plus 10% air damage, nothing insane. They have a bunch of stat into damage, a bunch of stat into speed, and very, very low health. So they are pretty squish. They have a zero SP deals air damage to closest enemy and bleed. Very annoying. They're probably going to be one of your first targets to take out for sure in the tier. They have a zero SP heals weakest teammate, so they're taking on the healer role, it seems. They have a one SP shields and heals target teammate, and a two SP deals air damage to the furthest enemy and bleed. Very, very annoying familiar. Let's go ahead and continue on the raid to see if we can see the other familiars. Okay, I don't know why he has this poor... <laughs> Uh, pixelized artwork but normally he doesn't look like this <laughs> this is cicada they come with plus 10 percent air damage they have a bunch of stat into power a bunch of stat into speed and a decent amount of health so it seems like they're going to be more of a damage dealer they have a zero sp air damage to the furthest enemy they have a zero sp deals air damage to the strongest enemy and bleed, which is very, very insane. Like this guy will be destroying your tank like crazy. This is target number one. And then you want to focus that little flying guy next. So you definitely want to take out Cicada first. They also have a one SP deals air damage to select enemy and corrupt. Now corrupt is also very strong. This is really good for lowering defenses. So Cicada is definitely a tank killer. And the 2 SP deals air damage to the weakest enemy and bleed. So not only will they target out your tank, they could also target out your bait and do the same thing as well for just one more SP. 
Cicada is very, very strong. And yeah, let's go ahead and auto on through this and we'll see you at the boss. Okay, well, I accidentally destroyed Lady Sparkin, even though I did turn auto off. So let's go ahead and see if we can check him out instead. So that's going to be the raid. Here, let's go to familiars. Oh, it's Lady Spin, sorry. So Lady Spin here, let's check him out. Lady Spin has plus 12.5% air damage. For their stats, they have a load of speed with decent health and pretty similar damage to their health. They are very, very fast for just being a base familiar. Their zero SP deals air damage to the weakest enemy and bleed. They are a bait destroyer, so just be very careful because they will murder your bait. They have a deals air damage to the closest two enemies as another zero SP which isn't too crazy because there's no bleed on it but they will be poking up the first two and for their first one sp they have deals air damage to target enemy and oxidize the enemy shield for their uh, their <clears throat> for their second one sp they have deals air damage to the weakest enemy and bleed which is very very scary for your bait again Seems like they have just a stronger version of their 0 SP as a 1 SP. And then they have a 2 SP deals air damage to target enemy two times. So the lucky thing is they don't have bleed on that, but it is the target enemy two times. They could target out your DPS or they can use it to finish off a bait. So all in all, Lady Spin is very, very dangerous. You have to take her out, then Cicada for sure. And that's finally going to be it for the tier, guys. We are finally in tier 17. And if you guys already know, which I'm pretty sure you all do, I'm already done with tier 17 as well for farming. I'm just waiting to upload this video. I might plan some stuff out and then I'll be making my next video shortly. So keep an eye out for that up tier from tier 17 to tier 18. Again, I do apologize for the wait. Um, I know it was a long, long time for this video, but like I said before, I literally put probably over 12 hours in just editing this one video and I'm not even done yet. So yeah, I do apologize. I am back. I did want to use this time to actually give a little announcement. I'm also going to make a separate video on it. So you might see me repeat myself in the next video, but I am going to be streaming every Thursday, probably around 6 p.m. Central time. The time isn't really confirmed, but the day is. Every Thursday, I will be streaming. Every Friday will be a new upload. And if I do any other uploads, it would be spontaneous. But there will be one upload per week and one stream per week. So keep an eye out for that. I'm trying to make shorter videos. This is gonna be one of my last longer videos and my next Let's Plays are gonna be a lot shorter, but still with the same amount of info. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is World Eater. Have a great one, guys. Peace.